just hours before NBA free agency was set to start, Kevin Durant pulled a pin, threw a grenade into the middle of everything, and detonated it with another installment of the Brooklyn Nets saga. Um, this comes just days after Kyrie said that he was opting in so that the duo could finish what they started. <sighs> kind of seems like uh, maybe Kevin did not want to finish what they started. He put in a trade request uh, today. Kyrie had until 5 to pick up his player option. Haven't heard anything yet about that happening officially or not, but it looks like it's blow it up season for the Nets. Um, obviously, KD, 33 years old, still one of the top, if not the best, scorer in the league right now. One of the top players. And even though he's had you know lingering issues with injuries and some major injuries over his career... He could still likely land the Brooklyn Nets one of the biggest trade hauls in the history of the league. Like, the Nets have to play this right because they're staring at an absolute treasure chest of assets that they can get back for him. Uh, of course, all the rumors quickly came out like, oh, he's going to go to the Lakers. Oh, he's going to go here. And while they have said that they're working with um, Kevin and his agents and everyone to find a destination. KD just signed an extension last year. He's under contract for four years. They're going to send him where they get the best like deal from. Uh, there was talk that it may be, um, that maybe KD and Kyrie were looking at teaming up somewhere else that wasn't Brooklyn. I can't imagine any teams wanting to take that on um, after watching how three years of the Brooklyn Nets have unfolded. Um, I heard a, a stat today, I wish I remember who tweeted it, but it was um, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry played 45 games together this year after Clay came back from his injuries. KD and Kyrie played 44 games together the entire three years that they've been on the Nets. So this was supposed to be one of the biggest super teams, this was supposed to be a perennial contender, and instead, in three years, it's gonna probably be pretty much over and gone uh, there is always the chance that you know the Nets and KD could salvage the relationship but it feels like they just kind of have gone not gone separate ways but like I don't know if it's KD's trust in the organization is gone the way they handled the Kyrie stuff like it could be anything and it seems like that's over now and uh, with KD obviously bringing in such a big trade package people have been running wild trying to speculate about what it could be uh, so far, the only two names that have come out as far as like his actual preferences are the Phoenix Suns and the Miami Heat. And <laughs> both of those teams, the reports according to Woj, Chris Haynes, Shams, all those guys, uh, say that if they're sending, if Brooklyn is sending KD to the Suns, the trade talks start with Devin Booker. And if they're sending him to the Heat, the trade talks start with Bam Adebayo. So probably not going to the Suns or the uh, Heat unless one of those teams is able to blow away the Nets with a package that does not include Devin Booker. I'm inclined to say it's probably the Suns that have a better, more realistic chance. Um, the Clippers could also put together a nice deal. Um, really, the Blazers. There's a lot of teams with um, like good mid-tier level contracts. The Raptors, the Clippers... Um, the Grizzlies have some nice players. The Pelicans could get interested. And, like, it's funny because they said in in an hour after the news broke, there had already been half the league calling the Brooklyn Nets to be like, hey, so what do you think? Like, what, what, what are we talking here as far as trades? Let's get this, let's get this discussion started. And really, it's overshadowed a lot of um a lot of the big signings today i decided i'm gonna do this in in three separate videos i'll have one with the kd news one with uh the big supermax extensions that were agreed to today and then another one later on that's gonna be more of like a day recap um but it just feels like this kevin durant news kind of swallowed free agency whole um and you know with a generational player like that and that doesn't happen all the time that they just are like hey trade me i have four years left of my contract it's understandable. Um, the one thing I did think about, though, is how upset the Atlanta Hawks might be right now. Like, they just traded three firsts, a pick swap, and Danilo Gallinari to the Spurs for DeJounte Murray, who is a great player. But 
three firsts, a pick swap, John Collins, Danilo Gallinari, and like two more assets. Probably a pretty strong trade package for Kevin Durant. Um, so Atlanta, I'm really curious if they're like, damn, why didn't we wait a day? Because honestly, looking at, at the assets everyone has, I mean, a reunion with OKC seems like it could be in the cards, but OKC seems pretty committed to the rebuild. Same thing with the Spurs. Kevin Durant played college uh, ball in Texas. Um, and the problem is the teams that have the cap space don't have much else that the Nets are going to want to take on. The team that stood out to me immediately as like if there was no need to make salaries match, no asset, nothing, if it was just you could just send them there and it worked, like trade machine style where they can't say no because of logic, I would want to send him to the Washington Wizards and team him up with Bradley Beal immediately. The only player making any type of max money on that team other than Beal is Chris Tapp's Porzingis. And... The Brooklyn Nets are not trading Kevin Durant for a package built around Chris Stapp's Porzingis. It's not happening. Doesn't matter how many picks they throw in. Doesn't matter anything. The Nets still have Ben Simmons under contract. They've made some free agency moves so far today. They traded a first to get Royce O'Neal from the Jazz. Resigned Patty Mills. Resigned Nick Claxton. This is a Nets team that is probably angling to keep Ben Simmons try to retool and see what they can get with this haul of picks and players probably coming for KD, try to get some value out of a, a Kyrie trade, and try to just be right back in the playoff picture. Like, Sean Marks has not been a, a GM that has been content with, with tanking or with rebuilding. He's he's rebooted the team on the fly twice now. So I don't see it happening, but KD next to Bradley Beal in Washington, that homecoming for KD would really be something cool to see. That's probably as far as like a basketball fit, the fit that I would like to see the most. Um, but who knows? This is this is just the first day. <laughs> we'll see um, what happens as far as going forward. Um, I'm sure trade packages and offers and stuff will continue to leak out. Um, so we'll see what happens. Who knows if this is going to be something that drags out for weeks or if this could be resolved tomorrow morning. Uh, so let me know your thoughts, um, if there's any preferred spots you'd like to see Kyrie go, or Kyrie, you'd like to see KD go, Kyrie too, I guess, but, uh, KD, obviously, um, crazy to think that one of the best players could just decide to request a trade two days after it seemed like everything was okay for the Nets, uh, feel bad for the Nets fans for sure, uh, this is definitely probably not what they were signing up for, um, three years ago. So it's a tough day for Nets fans. It's a crazy day for everyone else that follows the NBA. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you.